In this video I'll show you how to style your Elementos form checkbox and radio fields using CSS code. And I'm going to show you four versions. So from a form that looks like this, we're going to turn into this. This is the simple version. So instead of small radio buttons, we have here a rectangle shape with the option text in the center. Then in the second version we've added the check mark icon. In the third version we have a rounded image. And in the fourth and last version we have an image with no text. So these are the styles we're going to create today. So let's get started. Here I have a form with one radio field and four options. To style it, we need to add the CSS code. So I'm going to go to my code page. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on form design. And here we have our four versions. So I'm going to start with the simple one and I'm going to click to copy the CSS code. Next, I'm going to go back, make sure that your form is selected, go to advanced, scroll down to custom CSS and paste the code. And now the basic style is applied. Now let's take a look at the code and I'll explain the customization you can make. We're going to start with these purple lines. They explain what each parameter does, making it very easy to know where to make changes. Beside that, the code is divided into three main parts. The shape styling, the styling of the rectangle, the hover state styling, and styling for when the option is selected. So for example, if I want to change the border color of the shape, I'm going to go to the shape section. And here where it says border, I'm going to replace the word black with my hex code. So I'm going to highlight and paste my hex code. And now the border color is changed. Next, if I want to make the border thicker, so I can change it from three pixels to let's say six. And now the border is thicker. In the border radius, I can control the roundness of the corners of the shape. If I'm going to change it from 50 pixels to 20 pixels, you're going to see that they are less rounded. And if I'm going to set it to 0%, there's no roundness at all. Next, we have the shape background color. Right now it is set to white. So if I want to change it, I'm going to go to the background color. I'm going to highlight the white X code. And let's say I want to make it green. So I'm just going to type a green and now it's green. Next, we have the shape padding. Let me just add the text field. I want to show you something. So I'm going to duplicate this radio field and I'm going to change it from radio to text. You will notice that there is a high difference between the text field and our radio fields. So to fix it, we're going to go back to our code. So I'm going to go to the advanced tab. I'm going to scroll down to the custom CSS. And just because I want you to see it better, I'm going to change the border width from six pixels to one pixel. And now to adjust the actual height, we're going to go to padding and we're going to change it from 18 pixels to 12 pixels. And now the height is fixed and they match. Moving on to the margin. Here we can control the gap between the rectangles. So let me demonstrate. If I'm going to go to margin and I'm going to change it, from 7 pixels to 17 pixels, you're going to see that we're getting a lot more breathing room between the rectangles. Let me undo that. Next, we have the font size. My suggestion is to control it from the field settings. So let me show you. I'm going to go to the style tab, field, typography, and then I'm going to go to size. And any change I'm going to make here, it will affect the option text as well as the text inside the field. This will ensure a consistent design throughout the form. So let me just undo that and let's continue. So I'm going to go back to the code. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to scroll down to custom CSS. And next on the list, we have the color. Right now it is set to black. Let's change it to white so we can see the text better. So I'm going to highlight the black and instead I'm going to type white. And now it's white. If you don't see it, don't worry. In the live view, it will appear. Next, we have the text aligned. And right now it's aligned to the center. So let's say I want it to the left. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to highlight center and I'm going to type left instead. And now it's aligned to the left. I'm going to undo that. Next, we have the hover section. Here we can control the text color and the background color. So right now when we hover, we get the blue color. So if we want to change that, we're going to go to background color. And let's say instead of blue, I wanted to make it pink. So I'm going to type pink. And now when I hover, we get the color pink. And in the last section, we can control the text and background color of when the desired option is selected. So for this example, I'm going to select Elementor. And I'm going to change the text color from, let's say, from white to red and the background color from blue to black. So right now we have green for the normal state, pink for hover state, and black when your option is selected. So those were the styling options for the simple design. Now, of course, you can duplicate as many times as you want, and the style will apply to all of them. I'm going to undo, and now let's check it on mobile. And here, as you can see, it looks good as well. Now let's continue to the next design. So I'm going to go back to my code page and copy the CSS code for the checkbox version. So I'm going to click to copy CSS code. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to scroll down to custom CSS. 
I'm gonna highlight the old code and I'm gonna paste the new code. Now the settings for this code are exactly the same as in the simple version, but now include option to control the circle, the checkbox icon. So for example, I can go to the circle standing section and control the size of the check mark icon. So let's say I want to make it smaller. I can go to the width and change it from 32 to 22 and do the same to the height. And now the check mark is smaller. I can also make changes to the border size and color. And right now the check mark icon is aligned to the left. So if I want to align it to the right, I can go to where it says left. And instead of the word left, I'm gonna type right. And now it's aligned to the right. I'm gonna undo that. Next we have the option to change the background color and border color for when your option is selected. And here we have the option to change the background color for the hover state, which right now it's blue. So let's say I want to change it to red, so I'm gonna highlight the blue hex code and I'm gonna type the word red. And now when I hover, it's red. Now, of course, you can duplicate this version as many times as you need and the style will be applied to all of them. So those were the settings for the checkmark version. So let's continue to the next one. So I'm gonna go back to my code page and I'm gonna copy the CSS code for the circle version, the rounded image version. And then I'm gonna go back to Elementor. I'm gonna highlight the old code and I'm gonna paste the new one. Now, because we are using images in this version, we need to assign a CSS class. So I'm gonna go to Advanced, Layout, CSS class, and I'm gonna name it Form X. The next thing we need to do is give an ID to the radio field. So I'm gonna go to Content, I'm gonna go to my radio field, I'm gonna go to Advanced, I'm gonna go to ID, and I'm gonna type here Check 1. Right now we don't see the images, so I'm gonna Publish and Refresh. Now let's go back to the code. I want to show you how to add your own images. So I'm going to select the form widget. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to scroll down to custom CSS. Now in this code, I prepared an image placeholder for three checkbox fields, each with four options. Now let's say you want to change this element or icon image. What you need to do is go to the code, look for check one and replace the image URL with your own URL. Let me show you. We're going to go back to our dashboard. and then to the media library, and here I'm gonna select the new image I want to use. So let's say this orange flower is over here, I'm gonna click on it, and then I'm gonna copy URL to clipboard. Then I'm gonna go back to the code, and I'm gonna highlight the URL I want to replace, and I'm gonna paste the new one. So I'm gonna control V to paste, and as you can see, we see the new image. Now in this radio field, the one with the ID of check one, we have three more image placeholders, making it a total of four. And the process is the same, just replace this URL with your own URL. Now, what do you do if you want a fifth option? Let me show you. We're gonna go to the last one, we're gonna highlight, we're gonna control C to copy, and we're gonna paste it in the next row. And then I'm gonna go to this orange text, and as you can see, there is zero, one, two, three, and I'm gonna change it to four. And now I can go back to my content, I'm gonna go back to my radio field, I'm gonna go to my option, and I'm gonna add Breezy. Now we don't see the images, so again, I'm gonna publish and refresh. And now it appears and ready to go. Just change the URL. Now, if you want to add another checkbox or radio field, by the way, the difference between them is that radio buttons let you choose one option at a time, while checkbox lets you pick multiple options. So let's say you want to duplicate. We're gonna click the duplicate button. We're gonna go to this radio field. Again, we're gonna go to advanced and I'm gonna change the ID to check two. Now, if you want to add another radio field, the ID is gonna be check three and so on. Now, like I pointed out earlier, in the code I prepared image placeholders for three radio fields. This is the check one, the check two, and the check three. So if you want the fourth one, just like before, we're gonna highlight the last one, the third one, control C to copy, and we're gonna paste it in the next line. And now all we need to do is go again to the orange text and change it here from check three to check four. We're gonna do it here also, here also, and here the last one, and we're gonna do it also here for order's sake. So this is the process of using your own images. Now the rest of the code is the same as in the check mark. You can control the shape styling, the circle styling. So for example, let's make this circle bigger. So I'm gonna go to the width in the circle section, and I'm gonna make it from 62 to 82, and we're gonna do the same to the height but now they are too close. So I'm gonna go to the shape section. I'm gonna go to margin. I'm gonna change it from seven to 11, but we still don't see the text. So I'm gonna go to padding 
and I'm going to change it from 70 to 80. Now I can also control the position of this circle. So I can go again to the circle section. I'm going to go to left and instead of minus 6 pixels, I can set it to let's say 500 pixels. And as you can see now it's in the middle. So those were the settings for the rounded image version. Now let's go get the last version. So I'm going to go back to my code page. Image, copy CSS. I'm going to go back to Elementor. I'm going to highlight the old code and I'm going to paste the new one. Now let's take a look at the code. So when it comes to adding images, it's exactly the same workflow as in the last version. Now in this code, of course, you're going to find a section for the shape, a section for the hovering styling, and another section for when it's checked. Now, my recommendation for this version is that it works best when it is set to an inline list. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to content. I'm going to select this radio field and I'm going to enable inline list. Let me just publish and refresh. Now we can go back to the code. So I'm going to select this form. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to scroll down to custom CSS and I'm going to go to the shape section. So right now we have four options in a row, four images in a row. So let's say I want three in a row. So what I can do is go to the width and change it, let's say from 250 to 350. And now we have three in a row. Now, if I want two in a row, I can change this from 350 to 450 and so on. Now I can also go to the border radius and give it a radius of 20 pixels. You can also change the position of these images. You see all this dead space over here. What you can do is go back to the code where it says positioning options, look for desktop positioning, go to the left and change it from 10 pixels to 100 pixels. And now it's aligned to the center. And you have the same options for the mobile view. Now, if you're going to scroll down in the code, you're going to see that you have the option to change the border color for the hover state and where your option is selected. That's very important in this version. And that's it. This is how you style the checkbox and radio fields in your element of form. So that's it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm going to see you in the next one.